Okay, so what are some uses of indices? We've already encountered indices in measurement, haven't we? When we work out the area of a square, we use the formula A equals the length of the square squared. The index is 2. When we work out the area of a, tri a circle, rather, the area is pi times the radius squared. The index is 2. Working out volumes, the volume of a cube. The volume of a cube is L cubed. The index is 3. Volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi times the radius cubed. The index is 3. Notice that for 2D shapes, 2 dimensional shapes, the index is 2. For 3 dimensional shapes, the index is 3. So there's a very simple use of indices that we've come across already. Now, there's a lot of things that grow at a certain percentage rate per unit of time, say per year. And if that's the case, we can represent them by an equation which looks like this. Y, the quantity, is some number times another number, which we call the base, to the power of T, where T is the time, so the index is time. Now, where things grow, we'll find out that the B number has to be bigger than 1. So in this example here, it's 1.02, it's a little bit bigger than 1. In the example, the world's population growing at, say, 2% per year, we can find the population at any time, if we know the current population, with this formula. The population at any time is the current population times 1.02, that's the base, to the power of or index n, where n is the number of years from now. Now, it's good to be able to predict the population in the future to know what population we have to cater for in terms of food and resources. An interesting little thing that comes out of this formula is that if the growth in the world's population is 2% per year, the population will double in 36 years' time. That's pretty frightening, isn't it, that we have to be able to feed double the population in 36 years' time. The world's population is growing like this. This is a typical exponential growth, it's called, graph. Another example of exponential growth is in financial maths. Um, compound interest, where you borrow or invest money. The formula for working out how much money you have, say, in, let's look, just look at investment. The amount of money you have is the amount you invest times by this number, which is the base. It's 1 plus the rate of interest per year divided by the number of times interest is added per year to the power of or index number of payment periods or um, the number of times per year interest is added times the number of years. The index is this number. And if that's the situation, your growth, money grows very rapidly and again, what's called exponential growth. Another example like that in financial mass is inflation. The cost of a lot of things is increasing at an exponential rate. The cost of a loaf of bread, for example, is going like this as time progresses. It's going in exponential growth in value. Sometimes those, those things decrease or decay at a certain percentage rate per unit of time, say per year. Then the formula is still, well, it looks like the same formula, doesn't it? The quantity is some number times a base to the index of time. But this case, the B is less than 1. So, for example, in here, it's 0.95, a little bit less than 1. And the value of a car depreciating or going down by value is a good example of where something exhibits exponential decay. If it's decreasing by 5%, the value of the car at any time is its current value times 0.95, the base, to index T, the number of uh, years from now. So the value of the car goes down like that. That's a typical exponential decay curve. Another thing that exhibits exponential decay is uh, radioactive substances. Their activity at any time goes down at a constant rate. So the activity at any time is the current activity times the base, again a number less than 1, to the index of t, where t is the number of the years. The activity goes down in a curve like this, the exponential rate. Now you say the graph here says n, well that's the number of radioactive particles that are still uh, left. It could have well been activity versus time and would have the same shape. 
in quite a few branches of physics, exponents arise. For example, in projectile motion, anything that follows this direct trajectory, like this um, cyclist guy on his bike um, doing the jump, these equations would describe his motion. Notice that the time is squared, index 2. The velocity or the speed is squared, index 2 again. In a lot of situations where chance or probability involve um, indices arise. For example, did you know that the chance of throwing five sixes in a row with, with a die is one six to the power of five? The index is five. Lots of problems or situations in probability involve that index. And one thing we do look at in this topic, a use of indices, is in science where big and small numbers are expressed as powers of 10. Here's the idea, which we'll learn about. Big numbers expressed as a number between 1 and 10 times the power of 10. Small numbers expressed as a number between 1 and 10 times by again powers of 10. The big numbers have positive power, the small numbers have negative power. For example, if we're talking about the distance from the sun to the earth, it's a big number which can be expressed in scientific notation. The size of an atom in this little diagram, they've already expressed the numbers in scientific notation. The nucleus right at the centre atom has a diameter of 10 to the negative 13 centimetres. The diameter of the atom, a little bit hard to read here, but it's 10 to the minus 8 centimetres. So there's some examples of uh, where indices are used.